Hey, hey, hey. Hello, how's it going? That happened a lot smoother than normal. So I'm glad that it's starting off well. Apologize for us having to push things. It's been a pr press days are nuts. So I no, do apologize. No worries. Yeah, I'm sure you're kind of making the rounds today. And it, it, are you traveling right now? Is that right? You're yes, we're also um, in Ohio right now. We're, we're kind of going all over the US the past few days, getting ready for this premiere coming up Friday in Charleston um so of the film so um, yeah yeah we've been traveling a bit but uh yeah we're here where are you calling from um well cu currently i i d just did some traveling myself i'm in upstate new york typically I i'll be in brooklyn but uh yeah just visiting my parents for a few days this week so we're both connecting outside of home <laughs> it's the it's awesome. the time to get the last minute travels in at the end of the summer i guess exactly right we've got yeah. a, we're in a cool hotel here too so we're we're more than comfortable for this interview uh, <laughs> very nice all right us yeah, well, I'm super excited to, to chat with you guys about this. I just had the chance to watch the film last night. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first time that you've worked together in this capacity. Obviously, David, this is your feature film directorial debut. Have, have you worked together in this space before? Or was this all new territory for you? Well, we, we, so we have a, a development company. So we, we've produced together and developed projects for the past five, six years together. But yeah. Uh, and behind screen together so this is this was a, a great new experience for us yeah we've, cool. we've done some behind the scenes stuff and yeah. we're on like with both of us on yeah it was it was great because i mean i think you know i'm sure you've interviewed tons of independent filmmakers like just making a film is a miracle just getting it done is a miracle so mm -hmm. and um time is the enemy so the fact that i was able to work with my brother who we know each other so well I could give him a look. He'd know exactly what I needed to fix the performance. It was very quick. We had a shorthand that mm -hmm. gave us a lot of time, which allowed us to get a lot of other things we wouldn't have necessarily gotten. So working with someone who you have a shorthand with was a huge strength to the whole project. And um, I think a, a, a big benefit to the overall. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, t tell us a bit about the kind of the origin story for this, because I, I uh, again, really, really enjoyed it. David, I know that you're one of the co-writers on it. Um, and Selena Gomez is attached as producer. So what were the early seeds of this that kind of brought it to uh, where it is today? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we I grew up loving 80s movies, you know, coming of age films, and I'm an inherently optimistic guy. I loved how those movies gave me warm feelings and dealt with deeper themes. So I wanted to do something, you know, a, a new spin on one of those, one of those, you know, classic kind of 80s mm -hmm. films. So, um, there was always this itch to do something in that space. And the more we, um, the more we thought about it, the more we, themes started to come to our mind, powerful themes. Um, and so we started to really play with this theme of expectation versus reality and how our generation more than ever has, uh, is just inundated with social media, news, film, TV, and you expect your life to go a certain way. And that's not always the reality. So I kind of wanted to, to ground that in a fun story and, uh, um, make it an adventure, make it a feel good movie along the way. I think we can all agree. We want to feel good right now. And it's crazy times that we live in. Um, mm -hmm. We set it in an ensemble and it applies to all the characters differently, that kind of theme of expectation versus reality. And uh, we put them all on the road. So we wanted something that the whole family could sit down and watch. Um, so if you have a tweener out there and you're looking for a movie, this is like an ideal one for you. It's not something you're going to have to shut your eyes at at any point. Um, Purposely so, and unabashedly so. It, it's something that should be fun, heartwarming, and by the end, you know, get a little choked up and uh, leave with a smile on your face. I mean, that was one of the things that Selena really liked was it had a it had a it had a fun ending, a powerful ending. With any love triangle, it's it's not about who does he end up with. It's more about the fun and the adventure along the way. There, um, of course, it's fun if you're guessing along the way, but um, it's got to be dramatic along the way. So that. Those were kind of the things that we were mulling over um, in a nutshell uh, along the way. And uh, yeah, check it out on Friday. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. And, and uh, I'm glad that you mentioned kind, kind of this underlying theme of expectations versus reality. It's seen Lorenzo and your character, um, both in the sense that he had this certain expectation of what his senior year of high school was going to be like, but also expectations of who other people are. I mean, the, the, no spoilers, but given his love interest in the love triangle that he finds himself in, he is kind of projecting certain expectations on the people that he likes without really knowing them. Um, so what about that narrative? What about that complexity of character really intrigued you? Absolutely. I, I mean, I think...
Yeah, no worries. Went quiet on me, but we're back. We're back. We're okay. Back. Expectation. Uh, I, All right. I, I, that's a huge theme that you just hit on um, that really attracted me about Josh, which is I think a lot of people do that is especially in the high school years, they, they, you know, they follow a girl on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. And, you know, once they, they, they really don't know that person. Um, and that was a huge part of our character arc with Josh. Um, but discovering who this girl is and sort of wishing the best for her is, um, you know, true act of kindness, you know, for those characters. So that was one thing that spoke to Selena too, by the way, while we're talking about Zoe and expectation and whatnot is a lot of the eighties movies didn't really give the quote unquote pretty girl or quote unquote hot girl didn't really give her an arc. Like mm. that was kind of one note and would kind of be used and abused by those around uh, her in the story. And we purposely wanted to give that character like a deep arc and show, um, uh, you can't judge a book by its cover. And yeah. there's a lot going on in that girl. And she's got her own set of issues that she's trying to work through and that we all do. Um, and Selena really loved and appreciated that in the story and liked that we purposely flipped a lot of the female tropes on their head, um, especially with Zoe's character and Molly's mm -hmm. forming an authentic female friendship and helping one another and not being combative or catty or any of the things that we don't like about some some things that didn't age well in older films to say. Right, it. right. Uh, Th those older films, and then you see the same trope in like the Manic Pixie Dream Girl through the 2000s. So a lot of the behavior and the action for these female characters is hinged on the perspective of the men in their life. Whereas I feel like this, in, in a really nice way, not a way that's beating you over the head with it, but it does kind of flip the script a little bit. It's It's great. Yeah, exactly. It shouldn't even be something you really detect, but by the end, you, you just kind of feel good. You're like, wow, all these characters started somewhere and ended somewhere else. And we took that seriously as a, our responsibility as writers to like give everyone their fair shot and, and hopefully send everyone down a journey. So hopefully it's something that each person can kind of pick a character and be like, I, I see myself in that or I, can, I can, can relate to an aspect of that person's life. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, you mentioned that this is an ensemble comedy. Um, some really great characters in this with with people like Molly, with Zoe, with, with the other people that are going on this road trip, um, what was that casting process like for you guys? And how did you kind of flesh out who's going to be sharing the screen with you? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, again, with an indie film, like it's so hard to make an indie film and you need actors who can pull it off and pull it off quickly. So growing up child actors gave, I think us and me in particular as a director, a real advantage in the casting process because I just knew who could get it done and get it done quickly because I've been in their shoes so many times and I've I've seen the audition process in depth. So I just had a really good sense of like, this is the kind of person that I need for the role and this is the kind of person who can get it done quickly. And um, I went to some friends for certain roles right off the bat because I was like, they're going to be the Greg best Sol for it. They're going to nail it. Greg Sulkin, who mm -hmm. plays Dale, Jeff Garland, who's like, you know, a pseudo mentor to mine. Um, I knew would be the best mentor in a film ever. Um, and then... When I met Vanessa Morano and Jake Short, I instantly was taken aback by them because I knew they were so professional, so on point. Uh, Vanessa's been acting since she was a little girl. We both started on Without a Trace. I was like nine years old when I did an huh. episode of that. And she was on that show forever. Um, long career on Switch to Birth and many, many, many other shows and movies. So she's so professional that I was like, oh, she gives me gold and she gives me gold in one take. Like that's gonna <laughs> save us so big. <laughs> Because you just don't have the time on indie movies. You just don't, yeah. you don't, you know, you, you, you don't have the money that can buy you the time. You know, you're just, you want to get it, you want to get it quickly and you want to try to make it look as good as possible. So Jake Short was the same thing. G gave me gold really quickly. Um, and their auditions were just, right when they walked in the room, you're like. Nailed it. You know, they probably do this in every audition. You know, if they, if they, if they could book so many projects. So they, they were just pros. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that, that, that's what you want to do. I, I'm curious, uh, you mentioned that you've also been producing for a handful of years. So it's not your first time being on the other side of that casting table. Um, what typically stands out for you, whether it be in the room, whether it be on a self tape, what, what are the kind of traits that um, for the backstage audience today, all the working actors of the world, what are the things that kind of checks your boxes? Okay, in your tapes, make your tapes as professional as you can and make them different. Like the cell phone tapes, everyone has figured it out now. All actors have figured it out. Everyone's got a decent camera. Everyone's got good lighting. And I tell you, it helps. Like when I'm sitting there thumbing through a bunch of tapes as, a, as you know, when we're casting, the better ones just look better. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't, I don't care how long you've been in the business. 
subconsciously, if something looks better, you're going to like it more, yeah. you know, so get a get a decent camera. I'm not saying go out and spend thousands of dollars on a camera, but get a decent camera, try to light yourself well. And um, it's worth the investment. You know, if you spend a couple hundred bucks, like setting yourself up, it'll be the best investment ever. You can always keep it in your room. You can knock out tons of self tapes on, on it. Don't ever move it. Mm -hmm. Have it hooked up to your computer. You can you can nail it. And don't be afraid to be different. Yeah, be personal. Like be think... be fun and be funny. I mean, I'm sure we've all seen the Dacry Montgomery. That's how you say his name. Right? Yeah, it's Dacry Montgomery Instagram. Uh, not, mm -hmm. uh, Dacry Montgomery uh, uh, Stranger Things audition tape. Self tape. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's point in case. I, like a, that I'm that was a, super funny, and and a, I do that stuff for my own auditions, and yeah, you know what? I'm, it stands out. I, I've done the same. Um, I think in the slating process, when you're saying, you know, hi, um, I think in the slating process that's a big opportunity for actors to stand out um and say you know you love the script or like i'm a huge fan of so and so i i've mm -hmm. booked a role on it so um i think don't be can, shy yeah don't be shy make it this they're make seeing, it fun they're seeing so many tapes per day like they, i'm sure they want to laugh they want a little bit of a break during and the, the tape is yours do whatever you want with it like right right uh, and of course you guys are speaking from a well of experience having been acting for more years than you haven't been at this point. Um, I'm, I'm curious. Oh, are you frozen there? We got it? We're back. All right. All right. Keeps um, well, well, I, I, was just, I was just saying, but yeah, can you hear me? Good? Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, just a final question for you guys. I was just saying that you guys have been acting for, for so long cumulatively. You have some wisdom to share for the backstage audience out there. What is that one thing that you would tell your younger self when you were getting your start or anyone else getting their start today? I would tell myself, stop. You're not that important. Stop caring so much. There's so much more that goes into getting the role than just your performance. You know what, David, mm -hmm. you're not that important. Just go in there and do your best. And the rest is up to them. You know, I would stress, I would put so much stress on myself to nail it, to be perfect, to like give the best performance ever. And it would just, it would exhaust me. And I wish I could go back in time and just say, there is so much more than a good performance. Yeah. Like I have 10 options of actors that pulled it off that I could pick from. As mm -hmm. I'm like, there's 10 actors here that all could do it. I could hire all of these guys. Who's the right look? Who's the right feel? Who gels mm -hmm. the most? Who's got the, the, the right this or that? There's so many other things that go, that are out of your control that just, just, act, just act it and the rest is up to God, honestly. Like let go of it because you're doing you're you're killing yourself and you don't need to be doing that because mm -hmm. it's there's so much more aside from your performance that's out of your control so yeah. just 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 go in there and do your best that's it and what what that does is it, it lets you to have fun with with the auditions like every audition becomes fun instead of um that serious pressure stress i i literally when i i put fear the walking dead on amc i mm -hmm. I, I went in there not know i i did not think i was going to book the role i was not you know I that's was, how it always works i was very prepared but I was, this is such a huge, massive franchise. And when I went in there, I had so much fun. Casting director was amazing. They brought me in again. I'm like, there's no way I'm getting this. And, um, but that pressure, taking that pressure off of you, I was super prepared, but the pressure was taken off of me and it really made me free. It makes you free as an actor. So it sounds so basic, like yeah. just let go and don't care. Like it sounds so basic, but it's so true. And the thing that gave me a new understanding of it was when we got behind the camera and started casting. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, there's a lot of good actors out there, but there's so, my decision was not solely based on their acting ability. And that's how every director looks at it. There's so much more. I'd say it's, it's, even, it's, it's half. It's low, it might it's, even be less than half. You know. Like there's so much you have to do with each actor to pair them within the overall um, scope and feel of the film that doesn't have to do with acting. So, you know, let it go and just do your thing and if you get it it's meant to be like you just got to have faith that the roles that are meant to be are meant to be and the ones that aren't aren't um i mean it's yeah it is what it is yeah i mean i had the the when i when i was i almost got the hunger games franchise and uh, the director was like yeah you're I, I you're the actor's choice but you just don't have the right look mm -hmm. and you know i'm not six five like liam hemsworth but uh, <laughs> you know that that's what matters is is uh it's it's fifty fifty truly it's like your ability yeah. and and then on the other hand a million other factors so don't even stop putting the stress on yourself yeah yeah um well definitely some nice words of wisdom to to part with today um 
David Lorenzo, really, really big fan of this film. And thanks for sharing your time with us. I'm excited to see what you do next. And uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. And I look forward to everyone's feedback as, out there as actors. Uh, it comes out Friday, iTunes, Amazon, where movies are sold. It comes out the 4th of uh, September. So please, on my social media accounts, let me know your feedback. Would love to hear what you think. And uh, hope you feel good while watching it. So cheers. And, and thank you, guys. It, uh, really appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. Stay well, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.